Fabulous. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, let's let's keep going. So that was. Uh, I hope you under uh, you appreciate now the the significance of uh, the last video. Um, we're going to expand upon this idea and and really kind of uh, work it through work work through some of the consequences. Uh, of this effect, so uh, that we that we saw in the last video, i.e., that when you depolarize these uh, pyramidal cells, um, you in a sense start to kind of override these these carefully constructed patterns of strong and weak connections, um, uh, and that means that these patterns of activation that have been that are normally kind of stable and well defined start to break down. Information starts flowing out of these well defined patterns of connectivity. Information starts uh, flowing uh, between columns that wouldn't normally speak to each other, for example, because of weak, weak connections. Um, so let's kind of have a look at this. Um, so here, again, we're going right back now to a much simpler version of our of our model. Um, but this is when we were thinking about the development, initially thinking about the development of the, the world model, um, we, we kind of saw how the, the pattern of connectivity was sculpted such that you get um, these particular patterns of activity um, caused by you know, these columns uh, speaking to each other, ones that are kind of strongly connected. However, when you, as we saw in the last video, when we actually depolarize all of the columns, um, you essentially override this connectivity. So you get a kind of a, a more of a kind of a democratization of uh, of this connectivity and so when this column for example is activated it might speak to this column might activate this one which might then activate this one uh, which might activate this one and and and, and so on and so forth uh, and so we get a much more disorganized pattern of activity um, uh, through these cortical columns you know this stable um, well-defined world model because that's what we're talking about here you know your world model is constructed by these columns the pattern of activation of these columns so when um, this these pattern of activation becomes more disordered and it becomes kind of a free-for-all really in terms of column activation and the, the, the flow of information between columns um, the world model itself starts to to fall apart and becomes kind of disrupted now so in the last video, I kind of said, you know, what happens if we depolarize these, these pyramidal cells? But why did we do that? You know, why did we depolarize these pyramidal cells? Well, if you think back to uh, unit five, we spent a lot of time talking about the effect of 5-HT2A receptor activation coupled with crosstalk with uh, the MGLU-R2 receptor. Go back and look at that if if you've kind of um, uh, forgotten that, that's really important, obviously. Uh, and um, and um, the effect of 5-HT2A receptor activation, um, together with this MGLU-R2 crosstalk, causes this dramatic depolarization of your pyramidal cells. So this is exactly what we're seeing here. Um, let's actually have a look at um, a pyramidal cell again. Um, so you all know now what a pyramidal cell looks like. Uh, we'll draw him in, I don't know, we'll draw him in yellow, why not? So a pyramidal cell, of course, we've got a pyramidal, a pyramidal shaped cell body, we've got our axon, uh, and we've got our basal dendrites, and we've got our apical dendrite. And where do we find these um, 5-HT2A receptors? I'm doing blue. Well, you find them on the dendrites. So T2A receptors. So when, um, when a, a drug such as LSD, let's say, what color am I going to draw LSD? I think it should be, 
you know what? I think it should be orange. Orange sunshine, yes? So let's imagine, here we go, there's an orange sunshine pill. There we go. Yeah, this is LSD. When LSD comes along and binds to the 5-HT2R, uh, 5-HT2A receptors, what's going to happen to the membrane potential of these pyramidal cells? Well, so normally, ooh, that's a bit... That's a bit dodgy. It's a dodgy line, Andrew. I'm going to change that. I'm not happy with that. Um, so, the membrane potential, that's a bit better. Um, so normally, here we're at zero. So normally the resting potential is kind of set here. This is our resting potential. So when what happens when LSD is present and binds? We know that LSD sticks to these 5-HT2A receptors and kind of sits there. Um, so what happens? Well, I should again draw this in orange, shouldn't I? Yes, the membrane potential is raised upwards. So we get a new resting potential which is higher. And of course, we saw the very effect of that on the transmission of information between cortical columns. The information flows out of these normally well demarcated cortical column connectivity networks. Ah, wonderful stuff. So let's have a look again at uh, our world model. We'll look at the more advanced version, so to speak. So, so this is our most advanced uh, world model now. Uh, this hierarchical model, and you, you, know, you understand this now, you've got the higher levels Um, terrible handwriting again, and you got the low level, the hierarchy, yes, and information is flowing, the predictions are flowing downward, trying to predict sensory information here, yes, all good. So what happens when psychedelics is introduced, the classic psychedelic that binds to the 5-HT2A receptor? Well, all of this carefully kind of orchestrated uh, connectivity that's been established over, you know, a number of timescales to to uh, you know to establish your your this kind of stable and functional model of reality uh, is all overridden so you know uh, it's almost as if they kind of weren't there well not weren't there but the the um the, the this pattern of this very precise pattern of connectivity has essentially been overridden um, now here i've just completely removed all the connections not because they're not there uh, but because in a way you know they're all kind of connected to each other all the columns can now speak to each other uh, for reasons that we have just uh, been through in in this uh, in the last video and so instead of this very precise um, world model we get this very unstable uh, world model where information is flowing between cortical columns um, much more freely. And this is really the first um, psychedelic, uh, the, the kind of the start, if you like, uh, of the psychedelic effect. Okay, we're getting there now. So, so we understand that so psychedelics, by binding to the 5-HT2A receptor, they depolarize the pyramidal cells, and that causes the, the flow of information out of these normally well demarcated um, cortical column networks. Now, let's think about the consequences of that. So, what is this world model doing? Well, to recall, the world model is predicting, it's in the business of predicting sensory information, right? Um, it is your model of reality, but its, it's, it's kind of aim is to be able to predict it's, it's a functional model uh, that is trying to predict the patterns of information coming into the brain from the environment. Uh, and this is how we kind of illustrated it, right? This is, this is completely familiar uh, to you now. Um, you've got this top-down um, top information flow from the higher levels of the, the cortical hierarchy uh, to the low levels, uh, which ultimately are trying to predict this sensory information. And what happens when they get that prediction correct? Well, well, the sensory information is essentially filtered out. Now, this again is an, uh, something that I did try and stress in the earlier units, but you may have kind of slipped your mind, uh, or you may have filtered it out. Uh, but this is a filtering process. When the the world model, the model constructed by these patterns of cortical columns is, is successful in predicting these patterns of 
uh, information, um, it, it basically suppresses it. This top-down information flow essentially suppresses that information. It says, I know, I know this. I, I was able to predict it. This is exactly what I thought was going to happen. And so it, it suppresses, it inhibits, it explains away, it filters out that information. In other words, that successfully predicted sensory information never makes it past the, the lowest level of the cortical hierarchy. It is extinguished. Uh, I sound like I'm stressing that point, but it's really important. So, so what happens then when a psychedelic drug enters the brain? Well, we've already seen it disrupts that world model. The world model, it, the brain essentially loses control of that model because its patterns of connectivity no longer apply. They've been overridden. Uh, columns are starting to speak to each other that weren't speaking to each other before. You're getting more random patterns of cortical activity. In other words, the brain loses its ability to successfully predict sensory information because its ability to predict sensory information depends upon it having a functioning, well-defined model uh, of, of the environment. When that breaks down, obviously, those predictions are going to start uh, to fail. So again, let's uh, have a look at this. So again, this is without psychedelics. This is what we've seen before. So when the so the brain is attempting to predict uh, predict this pattern of sensory information, when it fails, as it does here, what happens? Well, that uh, the, this surprising, unpredicted information is passed upwards through uh, the cortical hierarchy uh, and is used to update and refine uh, the model. So what do you think happens then with psych when a psychedelic drug is in the brain? Well, of course, the model is very, you know, it loses its ability to predict sensory information uh, because these patterns of cortical column activity are, are, are more disorganized and more random and so you get an increase in unpredicted information increase in unpredicted information the brain loses its ability to predict the sensory information which means you get an increase in these error signals yeah and remember that the error signals increase Yes, the error signals are the way that sensory information flows up through uh, the cortical um, hierarchy. So what does this mean uh, for the brain? Um, normally, the brain, when it's successful, as I said, you know, when it, when it successfully predicts this sensory information, that in information doesn't get up into, uh, it doesn't reach your world model essentially. It doesn't become part of your conscious experience of the world. When your brain fails to do that in the presence of a psychedelic drug, um, that information gets through the, uh, these predictive uh, strategies that the brain is attempting to kind of predict and extinguish these patterns of sensory information. Those fail and so the you get this increase in error signals, an increase in the flow of information uh, that's coming into the brain and making it into your world model. In other words, your brain loses the ability to filter sensory uh, information. And that is experienced to you uh, as an increase in surprising, novel, significant um, uh, information. So the world, not only does the world become uh, less stable and, and start to change and start to become kind of more fragment, fragmented and fluid um, because of this effect on the structure of the world model, uh, but also you get an increase in the information flow coming into the, into the brain and making it up into the higher levels of your cortical hierarchy. Uh, and that information appears to you uh, as surprising. It appears novel. You, you see the world anew in a sense. Um, information normally that makes it up through the, through the levels of the cortical hierarchy is surprising information. It's novel information. It's information the brain didn't predict. Now, 
all of that new information, all of that information uh, is, is making it up because of the increase in these error signals. It's making it up, it, making it up into uh, the, the, the higher levels of your cortical hierarchy. And so the world becomes uh, Im imbued with great significance and novelty and it becomes strange and fascinating and it's like you're seeing the world as a child and in a sense um, that's exactly what you are doing you're seeing the world entirely anew um, as a child would when a child first opens his eyes and sees a brand new world you know imagine a baby emerging from the womb and opening his or her eyes uh, uh, and, uh, and seeing the world for the very, very first time. <gasps> Wonder of wonders, right? And, and that's what's happening um, in, in quite a literal sense uh, when you take a psychedelic drug. Um, this is not an illusion. This, the novelty and the significance uh, and the surprising nature of everything you see, is, it's not an illusion. Uh, it, it's quite real. Um, your brain is uh, is very good at, at normally at filtering out all of this information, and you know we've been through how it how it achieves that. When it loses that ability, um, all this this information that the brain kind of says, I don't need to know that. You know, I have this model. It works. I have this perfectly functioning model of the world. It works perfectly. Um, why do I you know why do I need to know about this sensory information? And so the brain filters it out, but now all that information makes it up into the higher levels of your cortical hierarchy and <gasps> wow, 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 wow. Um, yes, so we're kind of, um, hopefully you can start to get the feeling now that you're developing an understanding for what's happening with psychedelics. I'm not going to do kind of trip reports really, well I'll do one, uh, we're very, very sure of very brief excerpt from The Doors of Perception by Aldous Huxley, Huxley perhaps the most famous and important trip report uh, ever written. And, and he kind of describes this effect and the influence of mescaline. And he says, a bunch of flowers shining with their own inner light and all but quivering under the pressure of the significance with which they were charged. Aldous Huxley here is seeing this flower anew. He is seeing the flower uh, in a way that he has never seen before. You know, normally when you look at a flower, you're seeing that functional model of the flower that your kind of brain knows about. Your brain doesn't really, you don't really see the flower when you look at a flower normally. You're, you're seeing the brain's model. You know, your brain knows what this flower is. He knows the important features. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's basically filtering out most of the information, the sensory information it's receiving from that flower. But then, under the influence of the psychedelic mescaline, in the case of Aldous, Aldous Huxley, um, um, all of that, in, that, that novel and surprising information that you never knew was there um, starts filling the brain. It's a magical thing. Anyway, I think that was... Uh, uh, an important video, uh, but we're not finished. Uh, we're not finished. In the next video, we're actually going to take this even further uh, and, and kind of describe and explain uh, some more effects of psychedelic drugs. Uh, again, simply using everything we've learned. You should hopefully appreciate that we've, uh, we've I've been, hope, I've hopefully been able to, or we've been able to kind of develop these ideas without leaving too many kind of explanatory gaps. Um, in that um, everything follows from everything else. Uh, and yet, you know, through, by going from really, really quite simple ideas and building them up slowly and gradually, we have kind of reached the point where we can explain uh, what's going on when Aldous Huxley had his um, mystical experience looking at a flower. So it's, uh, it's powerful stuff, I would say. Okay, so I'll uh, see you in the next video. Yeah.